Good talk. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Tonight we're going to cover something that we call MPA, Medical Patient Assessment. And the good news is, the good news is that, that it's very similar to... What's full screen? F11. It was. That was full screen, sorry. Good news is that it's very similar to the trauma patient assessment that you already know and you're already very familiar with. Um, and it's based, we're going to base it on that. We're going to use a lot of the knowledge that you already have from the trauma patient assessment to do medical patient assessment. So, basic outline. <coughs> Excuse me, it doesn't really need. Too much to say about it, it's exactly the same outline that we're using for the trauma patient assessment. We're going to have seen sides up, primary history taking, secondary assessment, and reassessment. Obviously, a few more steps will be needed. Uh, we always start, as you know, in our scene sides up with the assigned scene safety. And now we're going to change. So we're used to males with a trauma, with a mechanism of injury. Now this is one of the changes. We're going to go to nails because now we have something called a nature of illness. Nature of illness. What is the reason that you called? Okay. Remember, we're not dealing with anybody that got hurt. No trauma, no outside forces were applied. This person is at home. They have a stomachache. They have a headache. Their arm hurts. Their leg, whatever part of the body. It is. That is bothering them. That is the nature of the illness. Why did they call? Obviously, we can include all the difficulty breathings, the anaphylaxis, a lot of different things we'll get to are all encompassed by the medical patient assessment. So remember, they did not get hurt per se. They are sick or ill. This is, a, this is for a call when someone's not feeling well. This is, this is a typical patient not feeling well. All of those, and you know, to somebody being in cardiac arrest is also a medical patient. Okay, as long as there was no trauma involved. NOI is the nature of illness. Okay, what did dispatch tell you you are going to? Okay, number of patients, additional resources, cervical spine, PRN as needed. You know all this stuff. If you need it, you're going to use it. If not, not. Why are you doing the PRN? As I mean, uh, what do you call it? The cervical spine? Uh, Again, it's correct. important. I, I leave it in. Ask what type of illness would... Uh... Very good question. So here's, here's my way of doing it. My theory is that we need to make the medical patient assessment as similar to the trauma patient assessment as possible. If we remove cervical spine from medical and you forget it in trauma, you will either kill your patient or fail your test. If you mention it here, you will always remember that on every assessment you need to think about cervical spine and you'll always remember it for both. So there really is nothing. Right. It's, it's, it's PRN. It depends on the no. question you ask it and you can get as needed. <laughs> primary assessment, this is your ABCs. Okay? What do we do? Why do we do a primary assessment? We are fine and treat. treat. Okay, identify and treat life threatening emergencies. So here you go, remember your ABCs, we'll get to it when we do the blue book. Um, these are all things that you'd want to do. Okay, I'm not going to go into this now. This is all the same as trauma uh, so far. Okay, general impression. Again, these are the things we usually look for. An approximate age, male, female. Race only is that important position found, right? Why is, is that important? What differences? Exact, do it exactly the same. Position found? If, if, I, if I'm finding someone supine or, or prone, does it really we, make any difference? You need to document that. Always. Always, always. I want to know how you found them. Okay? General appearance. Okay? 
Do they look like they're in extremis? They're going to die? Are they okay? Will they make it one thing or another? Here's your amp pool again with new, new uh, <laughs> graphics, okay? So we should know amp pool by now. Alert, that verbal pain, unresponsive. Remember, pain is a serious, painful stimuli. Not a little tap, you know, nice, nice doggy, a little, you know, it's got to be serious pain. We've told you how to do that, right? State wants you to pinch over here on the top of the shoulder. Um, and unresponsive, of course, means that... Absent of ADG. What? Did you say unresponsive is technically absent of AVP? Yes, there is no yeah. AVP. You need the U for the AVP. Yeah, but you've got to do all these three to get to the U to be able to say intelligently that your patient is unresponsive. Okay, not like we get a lot of cases. Every time you're using the app by alert, you always have to make sure that they're A and O times two. You yes. always have to ask them three separate Yes, always. Person, place, and time. Always. They have to they have to pass those three and then they follow. Then you stop. Then they're A and that's it. You don't go any further. You don't get to hurt them if they're an A. Okay? Uh, life threats, we spoke, we know this. This is all stuff that we did on trauma, right? Life threats. Is there a spurting artery that we need to deal with right away? A life threat? Or are they dead and we need to do a quick CPR check? Is this, um, is this really the first, I mean, technically, is this like the first thing after the scene size up? Like before, or like anything? I mean, to, I, don't know. I mean, you could do it either way. It says that that's one of the things. But I'm saying when you would get that in real life, that's. Let's deal with the state now. Understanding the steps, we'll talk about real life later. Okay? Um, talk to your patient, all right? In the state exam, the difference between the trauma patient and the medical patient is that the medical patient will be talking to you. You will get answers to questions. The trauma patient will always be either unresponsive or only to painful stimuli, but you will not be getting any you'll not be getting any dialogue with them. And that's how it goes on the state exam. Is that in real life? Absolutely not. Do you have many medical patients who are unresponsive? Mm -hmm. Of course you do. And, and I'll tell you how to deal with those also. However, you also have in real life many, many of your trauma patients who are talking to you. So there's always going to be a crossover where you use part of one with the other or one with that one. Basically, if you have an unresponsive medical patient, you do a trauma patient assessment. You do the head to toe, you do everything the way you would do it on the trauma patient. Because you have no other way of getting any other... Even if, you have a history, if somebody over there says this person was sitting on the couch and they just passed out. Okay, so, but now what? You're not going to be able to get all the answers you want unless the person that's at But you're there. still going to palpate and see if they broke their ribs sitting on the couch? You might need to. Give you a very quick story. I didn't want to do too many stories tonight. I'll give you a very quick story of a real case that I had many, many, many years ago. I was called for the abdominal pain. Does it get more medical than the abdominal pain? Absolutely not. Okay, I show up. It's on uh, it's on Carroll Street. Oh. Um, different block. I go over there for the abdominal pain, and I come in, somebody lets me in the house, go out, you know, into the house, all very nice, and there is a child, nine, ten years old, sitting on the couch, I hear adults in the back of the house talking, and there's nobody with the child. First thing in my head is, something's wrong, right? Yeah, what, what's going on? Who let you into the house? Some adult. Yeah. And they the pointed child? to the you child. the patient? Oh. Okay? And then they disappeared. So, I'm stuck there with a 10 year old child in a beautiful living room, sitting on a couch, and no adults. So, 
This is just too weird. This is just too weird. Okay? What's going on? What's going on? I don't understand. So I go over to the child and I start talking to the child. You have stomachache? Yeah. It's really hurting me over here. It's really hurting me. I'm like, okay, where's your mom? Is she over there? He says, no, it's not my house. I said, okay, explain. He says, yeah, I was crossing the street. I got hit by a car. <laughs> Promise you. I got hit by a car. I flew to the end of the thing. I crawled up the stairs to the house, rang the bell. I said I was, you know, hurt. My stomach's bothering me. Can you help me? They said, yeah, sure. Come inside, sit down. We'll call it solved. Are you kidding me? You can't make stop. this crap up. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no car, there's no... Hey, He probably has some sort of mental illness. Never. No. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? about right? kid, is that the first thing well, you told well, us? No. Hi, how are you? you the kid nothing? was hit by a car. <laughs> Legit story. And then the family went back to the Super Bowl. Whatever they were doing in the kitchen, yeah. What was wrong with him? He had a stomachache. <laughs> <laughs> he had a stomachache. He had internal injury. Were you able to tell he got hit by a car? Just by talking to him? Did you, no, once I realized that I was doing it. said Wings Rover on it. What do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm saying he wasn't making once it up. Once I palpated yeah. him. Started, said, no, there's no way to know. No, I'm saying you know no... he wasn't making it up. What? You know he wasn't making it up. Oh, he wasn't making it up. Okay? So, so, so then, so this really answers your question of... Do you need sometimes spinal immobilization? Sometimes you do. But it was called in as medical. It was called in as medical. All right. Okay. So, primary assessment is the same thing. We're looking for life threats. We're looking for life threats. So we're still talking about the primary assessment, we're going to open the airway. Remember, with trauma, we're not even going to think which way we're going to use, right? We're going to use a modified jaw thrust. In medical, if they were sitting on the couch or in bed and they're okay, then we may just do the head tilt chin lift. That's really easy. Again, I want you to do clear, open, maintain the airway exactly the same as you would in trauma. What's the difference? So let's say I walk in, this is 98-year-old grandma sitting on her couch at home. Okay? Am I taking my OPA and ramming it down her throat? Okay? Am I suctioning secretions in somebody that's talking to me? No. All right. So all we need to do is we need to talk to the patient. If you talk to a patient and they can speak to you in full sentences, this tells me one thing. This does not tell me they're alert. This tells me that they have an open patent airway. Okay? That is good enough. So what we want to do on the state medical patient assessment test That's an OPA, no? is negate the need for airway adjuncts and negate the need for suction. Do you say that? Yes. This way you still do coma Clear, open, maintain the airway exactly the same as Trump. But you'll just say we do. I'm this. I'm talking to the patient. They have an open airway. It's clear. It's pen. I don't need to suction. I don't need to insert an OPA. That's what you tell the examiner. Yes, that's what you say to the examiner. All right. All right. Uh, El Paso, you're familiar with, yes? Yes. Right, do we need to do this again? No. Nope. Nope. Right, we're familiar with it, we know how to do El Paso. Next. Um, circulation. So we want to look for life-threatening... Same thing. Hemorrhage, exactly the same thing. I have here this box. For those of you that forgot this information, it's here again. These are, these are approximate, they are approximate, they are Proximal. estimates, they are not exact science, okay? But do, they, do you run with that? With that? No, we get a blood pressure. <laughs> what does it mean? However, if I come on scene and I've got a million things going on and I just grab a radio pulse and I say, oh, I've got a radio pulse, 
and maybe can move on with that knowledge that, yeah, they've got over an 80 systolic. Okay? A uh, transport decision is going to really be the same thing. Is it load and go or is it stay and play? What's your transport decision? It's pretty. <laughs> okay, high priority patients, you know what high priority patients are. What are you doing LEC tonight? Okay. All right, we're going to ask something called. Can you go back one slide? What would you do the thing again with the rate, the 80, 70? Yeah. Okay. What this means is that there is a correlation between pulses and blood systolic pressure. blood pressure. Right? With me so far? Which means if there is a radial pulse, you can assume safely to say that they have a blood pressure systolic value of greater than 80. Without knowing at least without 80. Knowing the actual pulse. Without knowing the actual pulse. Just the fact so that they have it. You had still. Could be 81. It must be strong as strong as reach all the It could be 140. Right. Yeah, like, like, like most said, it could be 81. <laughs> <laughs> no, can be. Okay. Can be. <laughs> okay? Now, let's say they owe, you can only find the femoral pulse and no radio. Then we're thinking, wow, the most systolic, it's the seven. max is probably going to be, seven. not the max, the minimum yeah. systolic okay. pressure is going to be seven. 70. If they have a carotid, well, then we know they're alive. So it's radial 80, 70, and this is 60. 60. 60. Is the the this, is the, pressure. this is the closest to you the heart. You don't need a lot of force to get it's a But it could be they're still alive even if they don't have a carotid pulse. Oh, no. Oh. 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 Like, no, that's saying, our... So why does it mean under 60? I mean, like... I mean, it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be zero if they don't have a carotid pulse. It's possible that still, they still have some, some sort of pressure going on. Or with, not if they're dead. That's what I'm saying. So what does it mean? Then you know it's... It means if you can only find the carotid pulse and no other pulse on their body... Yeah. But definitely it can't be 50. They're alive. But it's not going to be 50, though. It means it'll be... Actually, Minimum six. Yeah. <laughs> but you're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. Again, this is not yeah. an exact <laughs> science. It's an estimation. Okay? All right, we're good? The reason why I got it wrong on the test, not that I didn't get it wrong, but if I wasn't getting it wrong, I was asking for a friend. Asking for a friend, I wasn't familiar with that. Okay. I ask open ended questions, get information. All right, get information from bystanders, from family members, from the patient themselves. We'll show you about the questions now. Are you familiar with this? Did I teach OPQRST? No, 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 no. Good, so now you're going to learn. OPQRST is an acronym to remind you of very important questions you need to ask every medical patient or every patient that you can talk to. However, the downside to it, the downside is that EMTs are great at learning this word, what the OPQRST stands for, but they have a very hard time translating that one single word into an entire question. So it's no good knowing that O means onset. You cannot say to the examiner, onset. <laughs> no, that's not a question, and even not a rhetorical question, right? <laughs> so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We need to turn the, again, the OPQRST are great to remember these words. Okay? To remember these words. What the, what the hard part is to remember what the actual question is. Right? So this is to remind you, oh, is to remind you of onset. Onset needs to remind you to ask, the full to ask this full question. Okay? And then look what it is. They're all written here. 
Not sure if the graphics are blocking. Maybe wow, they should move up a little bit. What were you doing when the pain began? Onset. So you hear linking the word pain began with onset. That's the correlation. But it's not so simple. It's not a simple correlation between that. What were you doing when the pain began? We have this, I've, I've mentioned this before, shoveling snow is a time when we get a lot of calls, all right? <coughs> what were you doing, you know, what were you doing when the pain began? Uh, were you doing exercise? Were you just sitting in your chair? We need to know. What was going on, okay? Is that always going to help you, right? Did you have to tell the hospital? You have to tell the medics responding or you have to tell the hospital. Not everything you ask is for you. Some things are just to put on the chart and pass on the information. Continu continuum of care. It's to get the big picture also. Especially yep. here, you need the more it's not a trauma when you see right. something. Here it's the information. Right. So, oh, onset. You gotta learn this and you will be tested on all this stuff. Onset, yeah, if you turn to the dark blue book, you can start filling this in on page 49. 49. Again, my goal is not that you learn these words. You know how to use them. Very good. How does quality just translate into please describe what you're feeling? I'm up to answer. <laughs> Very good. Next is P. Sorry, I was It's on the board. P is for provocation. And the question is, does anything make this better or worse? Typical answers will be, yes, when I stopped shoveling snow, I came inside and I sat down on the couch, feels a little better, feels a little easier. Or the opposite, I was shoveling snow, I got this terrible pain, da 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 da. I came inside, I sat down, no, I'm no better than I was when I was shoveling the snow. These are very important um, factors which may not affect your treatment or your plan. However, they're very important to continuum of care, and I need you to ask this. So, does anything make this better or worse? This has nothing to do with taking any sort of remedy. This is purely stopping the activity, laying down, sitting down, standing on the head, finding a position that worked for them. Anything like that, that makes it better or worse. Quality. It's really a wrong okay, word. quality. What? It's a wrong word for what you're I agree. Which one are we arguing with? Quality. Quality what doesn't mean, please describe what, what you're doing. You're, you're, you're Let him speak. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Actually, I didn't like the provocation. Speak to me. The provocation sounds. I didn't make these, this OP Cure ST. I know, if you would have made it, it would have made sense. Till T, this is a standard yeah, thing. Like the only question I made was the U, which isn't represented by the balloon for some reason. But all the rest are made uh, by the somebody a lot doing this a lot longer than me. It was made up. Nurses use it. Doctors, you everybody uses this. The U is the only one that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No so worries. I made it. It's stayed, so. All right. Um, quality. Please describe what you are feeling. So. I want to know the quality of this pain. Um, as a patient, I will tell you it is the most difficult question to answer. And if your patients can't answer it, don't worry about it. It's very difficult. What you're asking is, is the pain stabbing, shooting, crushing, uh, pressure, pulling, okay? You really don't want to give them a multiple choice quiz. You want to leave it open-ended. Can you describe that pain? What does that feel like to you? It should be description, really. Again. The letter D is no, not it goes to <laughs> it's, it's yeah. This is a medical thing that was invented before I was born. So I... Before the living sign. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. But I didn't make this up, just learn it and love it and do it. So That's it. You're, you're asking for a description of what kind of... But I don't want you to really say that. No. I, I want you to be thinking that, 
when you ask them, can you describe the pain? Right, on a personal level, I had about 10 years ago, I had a renal colic. That's a kidney stone. Right? And I was in pain. I can't even describe it. And they asked me the questions, the guys that I called to take me in. Okay? And they asked me, can you describe the pain? I said, no. No, I can't. I don't have the ability in this amount of pain to even think or know or have honestly any idea what it feels like. But you know who does, who can describe the pain? An elephant. People having an MI. They can describe it. They say, elephant. feels like someone's standing on my chest. Feels like, a, you know. Were you self when that was happening? Okay, we will not get into what I did or didn't do. All right? We are, we're definitely not going to discuss that on camera. All right? Don't need the FDA uh, knocking on my door. All right? So. What you do be thinking of stuff? Oh, anything, anything. Descriptive. Any descriptive word they give you. Practically, the patient says, I'm in a lot of pain. You're just going to keep moving? Keep moving. Do you, ask, do you ask them to rate their pain? That's later. Could you wait? Oh, you could have described the pain you're in because who knows what you're on? <laughs> Radiation. And Michelle, she was fine. Radiation. All right. Again, a big medical word not to be used in front of your patients. Okay? Radiation. Does the pain radiate? Does the pain move? If you ask the patient, does your pain radiate, they'll tell you, yeah, we have a radiator that gives steam in the winter. You know what I mean? Radiation. Right? So, <laughs> that next last week. so, does the pain radiate? Radiate means move. Is it just where you're showing me on your thigh? Or does it move down to your knees and toes? Is it just here in your chest in one place? Or is it somewhere else? I use this question to ask this, this question. I, I ask it slightly differently. Can you point with one finger to where your pain is? Because I tell you, if I've had this once, I've had it 150 times, where you come for the chest pain, EMTs are there, chest pain, chest pain, yeah, all the good stuff. Where's the pain? Here. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it's over and over and over. The EMTs don't ask this question. All right? Obviously, they didn't come to my class. But ask. Show me. And also, the Jewish thing, where does it hurt? Here. <laughs> right? That's, the, you know, the Jewish response. Where does it hurt? Point to the wife. You know. <laughs> but, <laughs> listen. <laughs> we need a simple answer. Can you point with one finger? Where is the pain? Very good. Now we know. It's right here. Fantastic. Does it move anywhere? Then I go into my radiation. Because, what are we looking for with the MI? What are we looking for? Neck, oh, neck, neck, left sided shoulder, neck, arm, jaw, right? So as, but again, I'm getting way more information, but that's all in my radiate question. And I don't use the word radiate to the patient. You all got it? Yep. Simple, makes sense, right? Actually, Fantastic. Severity, this is the EMT's favorite question. This they always ask and they always get it right. Thank God there's one thing most EMTs get right. I'm done. I'm feeling the hate. And... And it goes like this, on a scale from 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst pain you've ever experienced in your life, how would you rate the pain right before you called us? Okay. I honestly ask this question about 10 times during a transport. I ask when I get there how the pain was two hours ago when it started. I ask how the pain was right when I walked in. I ask how the pain is right now when I'm asking the question. Then I give medication maybe and I ask again, before and after. Then I may give another dose and I ask again. So I ask this question in real life many, many times. On the state exam, they just want it once. All right? Ask it once. On a, pain, on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst pain you've ever experienced in your life, how bad does it hurt? Now, I'll tell you another thing. You look at your patient, and you I know what they're going to say before they answer. 
Men always answer nine or ten. Women, even if they look like they're about to die, will say three or four. <laughs> I know this before I ask. We still ask. We still ask. Sometimes, you know, it just is what it is, okay? It just is what it is. Men just are the Not worst patients in Not the world. Woman. And women are, are bad in the other way, meaning they hold it all in. They, they won't admit to being in pain. They, they'll, be like, they'll, they'll be like doubled over. And I, ah, ah, how, what's the pain? One to ten? Yeah, maybe a three. <laughs> okay, we haven't had babies, so I guess they have something to compare it, compare it with. Um, so, you know, okay, fine. But... This is an important question nonetheless, and it's something you gotta do. Every single patient that can talk, what is the pain? Why, you know, the reason that you called, what was the pain? You know, again, if they say it started a week ago, well, what was the pain a week ago? What is it now? You called now, you know, what's going on? For the test, T. What, should we ask? what? For the test. For the test, test, just ask them now, straight out. Pain, the pain right now on scale one to 10. T, this is the easy one. When did it start? Um, yeah, when did it start? How long have you been in this pain? Or when did it start? It's the same question. Anything to do with time. Obviously, you understand that you're going to mix up this one and this one. Right? Because all students do. So understand. Answer has nothing to do with time. <coughs> Answer is, what were you doing? Possible <laughs> cause, basically. No, not even. Is that what you're looking for, no? What, are you, what were you doing? Time, how long has this been bothering you? Again, you can ask it either way. What time did it start? Or how long have you been having this pain? Either way, it's the same answer. And the last one, because after OPQRST comes you, at least when I went to kindergarten, many other instructors teach I. But I'm not sure which kindergarten they went to. <laughs> but apparently they had the letter I. What would it stand for? Uh, what, the other one? The I. Why would you want to know? <laughs> Interventions. Oh. But oh, as, sample, they sometimes add I. No. no. But OPQRST, really, the next letter is you. you. I'm not sure why it wasn't represented. China. China. Why it wasn't represented with a U. Because you don't have a balloon? No, when I searched for OPQSD, that's what came up. So you need to find now a balloon for you. <laughs> All right, you. Have you, right? This is a modern one. <laughs> yeah. Have you, you like that? I pee like in pneumonia. Pee like in pneumonia. Have you, 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 have you taken anything? Have you tried anything? Have you tried to alleviate this pain? Texting, texting. This is a texting you, you. yes. See, I could only have made this in the last 20 years. <laughs> so, but the screen is wow. smaller. The screen, the screen got smaller. String? It's just your eyesight. Oh, good. What are you, what are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to find the U balloon to go next to that. It's just the top. I saw this one. Okay. Um, all right, guys, you got to know this. You got to learn this. You got to be able to do this. Okay? No questions. Next. Now we're going to go through really quickly some OPQRST questions. Okay, let's go like this. The OPQRST questions. Uh -oh. I know. I know. I know. The OP questions were made for cardiac and respiratory cases only. All right? They expect you to learn another 20 questions for all the other stuff. I say, don't do that. Just keep it simple. Keep yes. the OPQRS thing. Yes. I'll show you. Right. I'll show you what I mean. Cardiac. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Cardiac must be very closely related. Okay. Now, after you've asked the OPQRST questions, you'll see in your blue book that there is something called assessment of body system. You see that? Yes. Good. Now what is that? That means you now have to assess the body system that they're complaining of and look for other possible things 
and other possible questions. I do have an entire page that I wrote on the next page. Where is it? Medical patient assessment of body systems, physical events. There you go. This is a full table that I made to aid you in knowing what to ask for in those situations. In those situations. Okay? Okay, so let's just go through some of these things. You see the ankles here? See that? See the swollen ankles? This is called pedal edema. Why has the patient got pedal edema? Water. blood is going Water. Where's it coming from, typically? From lungs. Why? I thought it's when the blood starts getting into the legs. Why? That a smile? No. No. Why? Because the, the, um, what's it called? The dehydrated? No. 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 Heart failure. Why? Why yeah, is that pedal edema? CHF. CHF. Thank you. Uh, he he got that. I'll give him the <laughs> Thank you. CHF. Right, right sided heart failure. Oh, yeah, I'm patient with this. Okay, backs up into. Okay, pedal edema. There are some other things here that you may see. There may be lung sounds, there may be problems in the lungs, right? Pulse oximetry may be no good, pedal edema. We spoke about club fingers. You have now a nice picture here of the angle. You can, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this tonight. It's, it's a little more than you really need. Cyanosis, you know what that is in JVD. I'll show you a picture of that a little later, jugular venous distension. What does that indicate for JVD? Cardiac uh, tamponade, maybe. Okay. All right, ultimate mental status. <laughs> okay. Is that Mandel? Is that Mandel in the picture? Oh, Jack Nicholson. Iris, knee-jerk reaction to his mom? Yeah. Jack Nicholson. I don't know who that is. Is that the guy that's in the thing that I like? One flew over the cuckoo's mouth. No, no, that's no. Nicholas Cage. All right. Um, they're all the same to me. Uh, Ultimental status, well, we're not really going to go into this. I just want to explain to you how you can use OPQRST. I want to explain it to you. Don't learn questions like a robot. Don't learn them like parents. Understand the concept. What do you want to know? Yeah, so O, right, onset, okay? What were you doing when it happened? Describe the episode. How are you going to get any of these answers from the middle of AMS? No, because you're going to ask a family member. Okay? So tell me what's going on. Talk to the family. Find out what's going on. P. Provokes. Anything make you better or worse? Well, with ultimate status, you know, you can ask them, is this the worst he got? Or was he worse or better before? Stuff like that. Q. Quality, there's no particular pain, so those go out the window. Um, what else we got? There's a spread in your radiation. Scale, uh, scale you can do. You can ask the family how much altered is he than usual. If he's been altered before and that was, you know, 4 out of 10 now, is he worse than before or better than, you know? Okay, onset, whatever, what, how did it start? Duration is T, is time. A lot of these stuff, see, compliant with meds interventions, that's you. What have you done? Has he taken anything? Tried to make it better or worse. So there's a lot of things that you can, you can do. Allergic so there's, reaction. So there's no specific questions, like in, in sample, that you, need to, that you need to deal with. Well, with it's cardiac specific. and respiratory, you've got to do the OPQRST. Uh -huh. Everything else is, is a branch, and I gave you specific questions for each one. Uh -huh. Okay? Here, so for radiation, I always like this one. Radiates with allergic reaction. Allergic reaction always starts on one part of the body and spreads. Okay, so where did it start? Where did it start? Oh yeah, it was just here on my arm. Now it's up this arm, across my chest, and down this arm. That's called progression, but you could also use the OPQRST. Onset, guess what? What were you doing? What did you just eat? Right? Apple pie. Right? Exactly. And you can just make it work for you based on... As long as you, remember, as long as you have that, they're saying that is the a place, Yeah. You Learn that, you can do. So even with the, with the allergic reaction and some of these other ones, you think, what sort of questions 
would, would someone's mom ask, right? What did you eat? When did you eat it? How much did you eat? Are you allergic to it? Right? These are just, it's just common you sense. Take any Benadryl after. Exactly. Exactly. Okay? So that's really this poisoning and drugs, all right? Look for track marks on the arm, you know. It's, what did they take, right? Again, here you may be talking, dealing with a toddler, with a little kid that, you know, um, Got into mom's stash. Right. Mom, or usually it's grandma visiting, grandpa, whatever, right? How many were in the bottle? When, how long ago did he take it? What's going on? What do we think it is? All this sort What's of good track? stuff. Oh, right, here we got our guy again. See? I'm back and it's still freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, you remember him? From He was in environmental. I think he froze. <laughs> he's not this. It says he's back and he's no, still he's freezing. Still shivering, so it's an early sign. Yes, yeah, still shivering. Okay. Not sure if that's an icicle or. Yeah, that's an icicle on his nose. Yeah, on his nose. It's pretty bad. So, environmental, uh, again, right? Environmental, what would you ask? Are they sweating? Are they shivering? Uh, you know, what's going on? All the same sort of questions. How long have they been outside? Okay? Just use common sense, okay? Where were they? What was the source of the environmental problem? Questions to ask on each scenario for the again? No, that's They're on the next page. I gave you a whole bunch. I guess not sure if you should do it anymore. Yeah. Shraggy. Yeah, we need Shraggy for this guy. No, Shraggy would just tell him he's mentally retarded. Hey, where do step one to change, all right? He makes sure he get his credit card first because he's only available the next day to pay him. Um, OBGYN we're going to do tomorrow night or whenever, so, because we're not gonna be here. so I'm not giving you a preview, no. Alright, secondary assessment is what you would expect it to be, a focused uh, assessment looking for DCAP, ETLS, and all that stuff. In real life, we don't usually have time to do this on the state exam, that's fine too, you won't really need to do a full body scan. Uh, obviously, you'll do a secondary assessment if they're complaining of severe pain in their leg or their shoulder, whatever, yes, you should assess the part that they're complaining about. Okay? You're not doing a head to toe, though. Well, again, if they're unresponsive, you are. Okay? Here's the secondary here. This is good stuff for you to remember what you need to do in the head to toe on your trauma patient assessment, same thing. Okay, here's a picture of JVD. In okay, case so you want to know what it looks like, okay, that is jugular venous distension. That is the people venous. Do that all the time, though. The yeah. what? People do that all the time on people. Okay, but really this is. That's why. <laughs> this is when they're sitting with their head at 45 degrees. Their body's at 45 degrees, otherwise known as. Semi-phallus. Semi-phallus, very good. It's distal to the uh, floor. <laughs> 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 While you're ahead, Shraggy. <laughs> abdomen. That's a cute abdomen. A cute abdomen. It's alright. It's alright. Shraggy's seen better. By the way, by the way, did you want to do an eye? Do you want to do You say it all the time. I don't. No, does he say I? Is it right? No, no, he says it's okay. He says it's okay. 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 No, I disagree on that one, but okay. <laughs> Remember, we spoke about rebound and point tenderness. Yes, with yes. the cute abdomen. One is, one is, which, one, which, one, which one is poison? One, one is pain? Pain and one is infection. infection. Infection and pain. Right, well, you tell me. Oh, God. What? Is rebound is usually with infection. infection. Okay? Um, I got a test question? There was. <laughs> um, this is the pelvis, you know, the usual in and down, down the and same way with trauma. Question to clarify, down and in, is that, are you looking for two separate things or is it the one, same motion. One, motion. one thing? It's the same motion. One thing, we're looking for instability of the pelvic girdle. Do you want to see it oh, okay. yeah. once and yeah. also twice, two separate times? No, one. What do you, what do you, what do you, what would feel different if you were being what? Cracking, pushing. Cracking, movement. He's yeah. Symmetrical. Yes. Basic question is: Does it have to dock to be inward and down, or can it be the other way? No, it can be he down wants to be in and down, down and down and in. Because you're trying to get a specific movement. Oh. Okay. Either. 
It's the bones. Um, extremities, lower than upper. Remember, this is what you do with the trauma. This is your head to toe. Okay, looking for PMS, fetal edema, minor injuries, all that good stuff. Vital signs, you know how to do all this? Sperm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, very important slide. Okay. Now, what you're going to have to tell, what you're going to have to tell the instructor on the stage is how you're going to treat what you found. No, you can just call me Eli. <laughs> how are you going to treat? <laughs> What you found. Hope that could be that the gonna, caption. Very good. That's going to give you like one of these scenarios that after your assessment. Yeah, you're going to have to role play an entire scenario. Whatever. That's you up. And at the end. At the end, you're going to have to come up with a treatment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's a quick review of treatments that you all know. Nothing new here. Watch. Cardiac. What are you going to do? Aspirin. Aspirin and, and the nitro. nitro providing us no contraindications. We can look at our pharmacology table. Maybe Sal needs to know about the pharmacology table. We spent an hour and a half. We spent an hour and a half. Two pages prior. Just thank him. Thanks, Sal. Thank okay. The pizza's on the list. <laughs> you could overdose on pizza. <laughs> Obesity. Respiratory, we're going to? A buteral or epi, if, if it's work. indicated, if the, if the, as, right, if the asthma attack is refractory to? The albuterol. The albuterol, good. If they are AMS, we, we want to give them? Okay. Glucose or I change it to sweet drink because there was some problem with fruit juice. Yeah, I'm not sure. So we went with sweet drink. Is that better for you, Ari? Can you use the wine punch? Gatorade? Only if it has sugar. Most Gatorades are low sugar. Anaphylaxis, we're going to use. Repipen poisoning. Control. Right, but we have to contact medical. medical control, environmental, we're going to use active or passive treatments. We're familiar with those, yes? No, no. What? What? What's the difference between an active and a passive treatment for environmental emergencies? Get, the get out of there. What is the difference in the treatment? Not Giving heat or warming packs. Very good. What? Right? What? You need to watch the environmental video. The whole thing? The heating packs, the warming packs, depending if they're conscious or unconscious. Groin, axilla, neck. Thing. Heat packs or cold packs. Oh, yeah. Well, when do you put them there? What? what? <laughs> An OBGYN. Yeah, right, right. What do you mean by the pa That's the active one. Passive, 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 passive is just blankets and heating the bus. Got you. OBGYN will deal with tomorrow. Is that how it works? That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, reassessment 5, FIVE, you should be familiar with this, it's exactly the same. It can either be done every 5, five, five minutes stable. or 15 minutes for which patient? Unstable. Stable. stable, unstable. These are test questions always. The state will ask this, I will ask this, so make sure you know it. What is Rosh Tevis 5? What is the acronym? Focus, Focus exam. Focus exam. Initial assessment, Initial assessment means your ABCs. V, repeat vital signs, and E, everything you did. Everything you did. Now we want to give a verbal report to somebody that looks like that. Hopefully not. Um, we're going to give a report, and here we now have. I guess we'll check my airway breathing. Pause. 